Hi, I'm Andrew Simpson from Ether Automation. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a workflow automation feedback loop. So what is a workflow automation feedback loop? Well, let's imagine you're running a function and you're going to edit, you're going to update a record at the end of that function. And the record that you update, you want to trigger a workflow automation that's going to run the same function. Right, so I'm going to show you how to do that in Zoho CRM. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about some of the use cases. So, the use cases for this: imagine you have a once daily sync that you need to sync your Zoho CRM with another software that has 500,000 records a day. Right, with Zoho CRM's deluge timeout limits, you're not going to be able to do all of those records in one function. You're going to need to rerun the function more than once, right? Uh, so that would be a really good example of how to do that. Or maybe you wanna do um, a daily rollup for each account or for each contact or something like that. Uh, and you need to run the same function multiple times knowing that it's likely gonna time out. Um, this would be how to do that. So in this video, I'm going to um, show you, we're gonna use a, a use case here where we're gonna get all the, let's say products um, and increase their price, right? And I'm going to show you how to do this on a feedback loop. Let me start by sharing my screen. Okay. So let's start by understanding a few things. The feedback loop will need to stop at some point. So how do we stop this feedback loop? There's a few things to do there. The first thing is we need to set a parameter that's going to want to exit out of. So let's start by creating a function. And this is going to be automation function. Function name, feedback loop. Let's, let's start by architecting this. Right. So what we know is somewhere, let's say here, we're going to say get all products. Right. So actually, let's make a description. So this function will update all products once a day by increasing their price by one. Okay. So we're first going to want to get all products. However, if you have, like we're talking about lots and lots and lots of products, um, you should know that doing something like zoho.crm.get record, get, get records and going products, this is going to max out at 200, right? So you actually need to go um, so there are other arguments here. You could say one comma 200. So it maxes out at 200, right? So this here, if you have thousand, 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 this will need to go to page two, page three, page four, et cetera, et cetera, right? Products. So what do we want to do here? Well, we want to make a system variable so that each time the, the function runs on that loop, it goes to the next batch. So right here, Let's say get system variable, right? So we'll call it count and we'll go equals Zoho dot CRM dot, then there should be get system variable, get org variable. Now I didn't have an org variable, so just go ahead and create one. You go to settings and then you go down here in developer space to Zoho CRM variables, create a variable, and let's call this count. And the API name is count. And this will be a number. And the value, let's start it with one. Great. Now, if I go back to function, let's get the count variable. And let's put that count variable in here. Okay. Now, let's make some architecture again. Let's go. Um, this is where we do the, do the loop thing and then here uh, uh, 
I'm going to say update the product. And then we're going to say down here, we're going to want to check to see if we want to continue loop. And then if we're continuing the loop, if continue, we want to update the system variable. And we're updating the system variable because we got it here. So if we got it started at one, we now want to change it to two. So we'll go update the system variable. And then we'll say trigger the loop. And then I'm actually going to, if not continue, we'll reset the system variable. Real simple, right? Real easy. So let's actually get into this. So now we want to do the loop thing right here. So let's say for each element, each um, the product, in products, we're going to want to update the product, right? So this is, should be the easy step here. Ooh, there we go. Let's go. Um, the, uh, we said we're going to increase by one. So let's go price equals product dot get. What is that variable name? Unit price. Unit underscore price. That's not an underscore at all. That's a typo. I have a real hard time with that. Come on, guy. And then we'll go plus one. And then we're going to go zoho.crm.update record. And the module is going to be products. The ID is going to be product. Dot get ID. And then finally, we're going to go, we're going to do a real simple units underscore price price. Great. So at this point, all this is doing is getting all the products and saying, hey, get, get the system variable, get the products on the first page, get the 200 of them. And then for each of those products, get the unit price, add one to it, then update that product again, all right? So far, this is straightforward, right? So now we wanna to check to see if the loop continues. And how do we wanna check that? So to see if the loop continues, to see if there are products on the next page. So let's go um, by checking if there are still more products to update. So let's um, next page count equals count plus one. And then let's go more products uh, equals the ho dot CRM dot get records. Again, we're gonna go products comma new page count. And then let's just go 10, right? If they're, uh, no, we want to say it, stick, stick with 200, right? Because it counts per page of 200. And we'll end up there. So now if more products dot count, so we're going to count how many products there are. And if it's greater than zero, we, uh, we want to continue, right? And then trigger loop. And if it's, less than zero, if it's, if it's equal to zero, if it's equal to zero, reset the system variable. Now, if you're an experienced programmer, you, you may get upset by what I've written here. I find this to be more readable than an else statement. I know exactly what this if is for, right? I know exactly what this is if it's for. You can use this as an else 
I don't like it. It's hard for me to read. So we're doing this my way for this video. So now we're going to update the system variable. How do you update the system variable? Well, it's kind of weird. Let me see if I could pull up from a previous video. If there is a previous video where this happened, it's popping up right here. Variable. We're going to go ahead and, and make a map. So it's not done the same way. There's no org variable update here. So we're going to say um, system variable map equals map. System variable map dot puts, and we're going to go API name all lowercase. And we know from up here the API name is counts. Um, accounts. And then we're going to add one more system variable. So this is the, the name. Think of this as the key in the key value pair. So now we need to put the value. So let's go put value, right? Real simple. Comma, and we want to go the more page, new page counts. Right? Then, so now that we have the map, we want to update Zoho with it. Let's go um, info zoho.crm. And it's actually invoke connector. I don't know why it's like this. I don't, this doesn't make any sense to me why this does it. Um, so don't, don't ask. Uh, and we want to type in, and this is very important, crm.set. Now, again, if you ask me what this means, I'm going to tell you I don't know. I don't know what invoke connector is. Let's put that in there. So this is going to update the system variable with the next um, with the, the, the next count for the next time this runs. Then we need to trigger the loop. And this is the most important part, right? So for this to work, we're going to actually want to create a new module. So I'm going to go to custom uh, customization, click modules and fields, and click new module. And I'm going to call this the loop throw from loops. And the singular here is loop, right? <laughs> What it's going to do is on creation of one of these, it's going to trigger the workflow. So untitled name, let's just change that. Save. Plural form is loops, singular is loop. Great. So we're going to go info zoho.crm. Uh, create record. The module is the loops record. And we're going to go um, loops map equals map loop map dot put name, comma, create. Loop. You can make that anything you want. Go to loops map. Copy, paste, there we go. So this is now going to create that loop. Now, if I go to, I'm going to close this and let's make sure we have that API name done properly. If I go to APIs, API name, loops, and it is loop name, name, great. So now when I run this, it's going to create a new loops record. Let's go ahead and do that. And I know it ran, it said it uh, success, executed successfully. I don't have more than 200 on a page. So for the example here, I'm actually gonna bring this number down to 10, right? Just to show you, you know, how this, how this works. So now let's save and execute. How many products do I have? Eight. All right, we're going to bring this down to five. There we go. So <clears throat> this now this now works. And, and as you can see, I'm going to comment out all my infos from figuring out what happened. And by the way, this is what happened. It was viewing this as a string. Down here, it um, info the create record. It created a record. Right. Um, so we know it works. Now let's just finish up to, to make sure it gets exited. Let's copy this. 
reset the system variable. Not the new page count, it's zero. And the new page count is too long to make sure. Great. So now I can run this again. Great, new value updated. And then if I run it the next time, it should show me more. There you go. So now we need to create, we're creating a record. So let's go comma, and this is the, the, the trick. It's trigger this and then work. Flow, I think it has an S. Um, no, it doesn't have an S. So this will then trigger a, any workflow attached to loop. And I can click save and execute. Great. So now we have a one. Next time it runs, this stuff is not going to be there. There you go. So it went to two and then it resets updated value. So now that that works, we're gonna actually wanna make the workflow automation. So let's go create a rule and apply it to loops. Um, for a YouTube video. On record, create, uh, on record creation, all loops, function, functions, feedback loop configure. There are no arguments, save and associate. So now every time um, one of these is created, it will automatically uh, run a feedback loop, right? So if I click save, And I open up data administration and go to audit log, right? As you can see, it runs. Now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a loop, one loop, and this can be invoked in any, in any way. So let's create a loop, uh, test, save. Now, if I click audit log, here's my test, and then it goes one, two, three, four, uh, and then it added another loop and then updated the other one. So one, two, three, four, I guess didn't do five because one of them for whatever reason. But now if I refresh again, there, that's where it ended. So it looped through all the things and it was invoking itself. So this prevents the deluge timeout issue, um, having to worry about uh, getting to an end of the function and not having the next one start. Um, as long as you have clear, exit criteria like we do here. See, uh, we're, we're not updating, we're not triggering the loop when we have no more products. Um, by doing this, there's a clear exit criteria. If you don't do that, this will go through all, all of your API credits very, very quickly. So make sure it's very critical you have exit criteria. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you in the next video.